Hey everyone, I just spent the entire day at a friend's house, a reptile friend's house, whose house burned down and he had a huge collection of ball pythons and tokay geckos and carpet pythons and boas and he lost about two-thirds of his snakes in the fire and his ge all of his geckos are gone. But I spent about seven hours there just trying to get everything out that we could. I took home about a dozen snakes that we're just gonna house temporarily until the family gets back on their feet. And as you can see, there's just charred grossness everywhere, but I thought I'd show you a few that I have so that hopefully I can show you some improvement. But there's, they're just covered in soot and I've given them a bath already and I've treated them with some tea tree oil and some aloe vera for their burns. And for the most part of the 12 that I got, 10 of them look in halfway decent shape. This is a carpet python. His mouth isn't the best, but I mean, there's there's worse ones. There's some black charring in there and in his pits, but he's alive. We're very thankful for the ones that we were able to get out. Now in this one we have, and I have cleaned out these bins too. It's just the outside I didn't, but the inside is as clean as it can be. Oh man, and you can just smell the smoke wafting off of these snakes even though they've been cleaned once. We have a couple more in here. This one is actually one of the worst for wear ones. I don't know if she's gonna make it but notice that you'll notice that a lot of their eyes are cloudy and this isn't because they're about to shed it's because they're trying to protect their eyes or they were trying to protect them in the fire and the entire house was just black when we went in there and it was so sad to see snake carcasses all around just laying all over the floor while we're trying to fish through and see who's alive and open up all the bins of the rack. I'm gonna try to turn her around here. So this one, I don't know. She's very slow moving. She didn't seem to mind at all when I was putting medication on her. So hopefully we'll check back and see that she hasn't passed away. And in this next bin we have a couple more balls. He was obviously a ball python breeder. All these specks are not mites or anything, it's just ashes. And I get more, I've been washing my hands throughout the day, but whenever I touch them, they just get full of soot all over again. I don't know how we're going to fix this. The vet is ordering in some more Batril or, and other antibiotics to give to these snakes. And I'll be getting some for the snakes that I have. But her entire jaw is just, it looks destroyed, this poor thing. So, although I've seen snakes that bounce back from crazy things like this, so a few sheds, as long as it doesn't get infected, maybe she'll make it. Anyway, this is just a few of the critters we got out. Thank God we got some. I mean, it was so burnt in the reptile room of this guy's house that the fire department was certain nothing had survived. But I will be showing you updates and show you how I'm going to treat them for their burns. We quickly finished heating our spare snake rack and we have all of the surviving snakes that we took anyway in here, all separated out. And we are applying medications for these poor guys as needed. We are going to soak all of these snakes in a betadine solution and you can get this on Amazon. And basically this is an antiseptic that helps prevent infections of wounds. So you want to mix enough in the water so that it creates kind of a tea kind of color and bathe them for about 10 to 15 minutes at a time, once a day or once every other day, depending on their conditions. Now that the baths are done, we are going to be applying polysporin to the burn marks. This is a good way to prevent infection in burns and other wounds. And that's also what the betadine soak was for too, was to prevent infection. But this one isn't too bad. I know, you're not going to like me here. But he does have some burns on his pits or by his pits, as well as on his lips. But his belly doesn't look too bad. But we do have to treat for this part. I know, I know. He has spunk, which is great. We'll take a little bit of this. Now he's not going to like me here, but I do have to apply the polysporin directly to where the burns are. Actually, he doesn't seem to mind too much. And there we go. We'll set him back in his tub. This is the one I'm now most concerned about because of her mouth. We're going to try to wipe off 
this drool and excessive salivation is a sign of an upper respiratory infection, which all of these snakes have a chance of getting because of, oh, you're wheezing too, because of the fire and the conditions they were pulled out of. But again, they're still alive, which is great. Just look at that. You poor thing. This is the other girl I was worried about. Her eyes are very clouded over as a result of the heat from the house yesterday. And not only does she have burns on her lips here, but she also has some burns and some burnt plastic or melted plastic along her body right there too. So we will be applying the polysporin to all of the affected areas. And she's got some wrinkled scales going on here too that I actually didn't notice before. So we'll take a really close look at her to make sure we have everything treated. I put her back, but you get the idea. Uh, I have three down, 10 more to go. Oh man, I just finished with that carpet and we're gonna close this. He is going to be giving me a run for my money. It's actually a good sign because it means he's feeling good enough to strike and I was warned he had a bit of an attitude, but I love it to be honest. And I figured while we're here, a cool fact about snakes is that they have an anticoagulant in their saliva, so it makes you bleed a little more than you would otherwise with a similar sized wound. I've had the snakes for about a week now, and a lot of them are showing major signs of improvement, but a few of them do still have some burns on their noses that will need uh, additional medication, which I now have. This is silver sulfadiazine cream, and it works wonders on burns, but you really only want to apply it once every three days or so. So I'm going to be doing it on this one to show you how much to apply, which is really just a thin layer. So you want to just restrain them around their head, they're not going to like it, and then apply just a thin layer onto the burn area. I know. You got the camera there. Now this girl not only has burn wounds on her nose, but also on her belly. So we will be applying the silver, uh, again just in a very thin layer onto all of the affected areas that I can find. Sadly, I don't know if this girl is going to make it due to the extent of her injuries. We have started antibiotic shots on her as well, which I will be showing you here shortly, but those are only to be done every 48 hours, so I just have to hope and pray that they do their job. A couple of the worst cases of our snakes are going to need antibiotic shots. So we are going to be giving them enrofloxacin every 48 hours or every two days as prescribed by our vet. And for this concentration of this medication, the snake will need, based on its size, 0.1 mils for every thousand grams of snake. So we have to weigh her first to make sure we know the right amount to give her. So she will need 0.14. So we will take her out, set her down. And you want to put the shots in the first third of the snake's body so that the snake's heart can pump it throughout the rest. And the shot should go in the muscle on either side of their spine. Of course, not directly on the spine, not on the underside of the snake, but on the top, just on the side of the spine. And since we gave her her last injection on her right side, today we're going to give it on the left because you want to switch that back and forth as well. There is a trick to preventing there is a trick to avoid getting an air bubble at the end of your syringe, so I'm going to show you how to do that here. After you put the needle of your uh, sterile syringe into the medication, take out some of the meds and then actually push them back in and that will push out the air bubble with it. So she needs 0.14, there we go. Next we have to sterilize the injection site, so we'll be using some rubbing alcohol and cleaning off where we are going to be administering the shot. And Ed corrected me, we actually did give her last shot on her left side, so this time we will be doing the right side instead. And you want the shot to go in at a 45 degree angle underneath one of the scales. And you'll see the medication bubble up right where you put it. You slowly pull the syringe back out 
and a little bit might ooze out, but that should be it. It should seal up after that. So she is done, we have a few more to go, so we'll just set up the camera as we go through the rest. that we have to give today. So overall what we're doing to treat these snakes is on one day we are giving them silver sulfadiazine along with a medicated bath with betadine and on the other day we are giving them their injections until the end of their medication cycle. Now for proper dosage amounts and to get most of these medications you do have to go through an exotic vet so don't take our word for the proper dosage as concentrations might be different with the medications that you get. But we'll keep you posted and thanks for watching. On the plus side, we have a new clutch of eggs. Let's see if you can guess what they are. Here, for a size comparison, is one of the bull snake eggs. Comment below what you think they are, and I'll let you know next week.